when it comes to extensions for the New York City subway, projects like the 2nd Avenue subway, Queenslink, Utica Avenue subway, a storyline extension to LaGuardia Airport, etc., are often at the top of the list. While these projects are important, and I want all of them built, many meaningful yet low-cost subway extensions can be done fully or partially using existing yard access tracks. One example of this is extension of the IRT Linux Avenue line or the present-day free train to Harlem 148th Street Station, which was built using yard tracks of the Linux yard. In today's video, we will take a look at subway extensions New York City could build, either fully or partially using yard tracks. We will start in Brooklyn, on the other end of the free train. After New Los Avenue Station, the tracks lead into Livonia Yard. We could use these tracks to extend the line to Linden Boulevard in East New York, an area that is underserved by public transit. The extension and the new station will be built using existing yard tracks and will be within the yard itself, making this extension a no-brainer. But I don't want the line to end at Linden Boulevard. I want to go one step further and extend the line one more stop to Gateway Center Mall in Spring Creek a fast-growing neighborhood with booming new housing developments. This additional section will require new infrastructure and tracks, but it will only be around 0.6 miles, so the price shouldn't be too crazy. I would also use this extension as an excuse to de-interline Rogers, as the current 3 train frequency might not be enough. With a de-interline Rogers, the 4 train will serve the Livonia Avenue line and this extension at 15 trains per hour, or train every 4 minutes, which should serve the area well for many years to come. The C train terminates at Euclid Avenue in Brooklyn. East of Euclid Avenue, a pair of tracks leads into Pitkin Yard, with Linden Plaza, a massive housing development, sits on top of it. Currently, residents there would have to take the subway at Grand Avenue. A short yard track extension of the C train would be a game changer for people living here. The extension will be built using existing tracks and within Pitkin Yard, making it another cheap and cost-effective extension. Though like the Livonia Yard extension, some level of deinterlining on the Fulton Street line will be needed to improve the C-train frequency, as the current headways are terrible. The L-train currently ends at Canarsi Rockway Parkway in Brooklyn, and a popular proposal is to extend it back to its original terminal at Canarsi Pier. However, since Rockway Parkway station is at service level and the former railway is occupied by houses and other buildings, there is no way to extend the line with the current layout. I have come up with multiple ways to extend the line using the nearby Canarsi Yard. Before I talk about them, I have to say that this isn't a high priority on the list of subway extensions New York City needs, but it is an interesting way to build a Canarsi Pier extension. The first way is to create a branch on the east end of Canarsie Yard and extend it along East 102nd Street to Canarsie Pier. However, this will create a one-stop branch, which is not good. Another more ambitious way is to build a new elevated station and extend the line on a viaduct along Rockway Parkway. To do so, new storage tracks will be constructed on the east end of Canarsie Yard. Then, some of the existing storage tracks will be removed to make space for construction. From here, we can either build a temporary station and construct the elevated station on the existing station site, or build the elevated station directly and convert the existing station site into storage tracks as part of the yard. Both ways will allow service to continue while the new station is being built. Rockway Parkway is also wider than East 102nd Street, making it easier to construct and elevate it. With the L train turned onto Rockway Parkway, it could then extend to Canarsie Pier. The BMT Jamaica line operates the only skip-stop service in the system with the J and Z trains. This has long been criticized for not saving much time and cutting into capacity. Many have wanted a third track to be installed east of Broadway Junction so we can have proper direction express service. While there is space for a third track to be installed, the S-curve between Crescent Street and Cypress Hills is a huge choke point that slows the line down. Previous proposals to eliminate the S-curve required eminent domain, which will be difficult. So it got me thinking, would it be possible to use the yard track at East New York to turn 
line on to Jamaica Avenue after Broadway Junction. There are two ways to do it. Either a single express track bypass line that runs along Jamaica Avenue to Cypress Hills, where it reconnects with the current line, or a new three-track line to replace the current section between Broadway Junction and Cypress Hills. For both of these options, a third track will be needed east of Cypress Hills. Cypress Hills, Raven Boulevard, or 104th Street and 121st Street will be express stations. I still have not decided whether to have Woodhaven Boulevard or 104th Street to be the express. The first one is a major north-south thoroughfare in Queens, and the second one connects with Queens Lake, so they are both important. The single-track bypass line will have no stations between Broadway Junction and Cypress Hills. The new three-track line will have two local stations at Van Sicklen Avenue and Highland Boulevard. While Peak Direction Express is ideal, capacity is an issue as Williamsburg Bridge can only handle 24 trains per hour, and it has to be split with the M train. This means you either only run a handful of express trains, or sacrifice headways at local stops for more express trains. None of this will be a great choice. So maybe my proposal should be considered at a later date, when the line gets CBTC so more trains can run on the line. Or if you want to eliminate the Crescent Street to Cypress Hills as current, build the free track option with two of them installed. While express trains save us time, there are other improvements that can do the equivalent, such as consolidating stations that are too close to each other, smoothing curves along the line, Great Supreme Myrtle Junction, and converting Marcy Avenue into an express station, or building a replacement station with a two-island platform free track layout above the Williamsburg Bridge bus terminal. Additionally, what I propose is not the only way to add a third track. It could simply be added along the existing alignment using the provisions, though it won't be able to avoid the Crescent Street to Cypress Hills S-curve. But again, the capacity limit is why we should consider running express trains at a later date. Fixing the BMT Jamaica line is a medium priority for me. It should be done. But maybe after other major projects are completed, a detailed video about fixing the BM to Jamaica line will be coming soon. So stay tuned. Next, we will look at yard track extensions in Queens, starting with Jamaica Yard, which had its tracks used for the IND World's Fair line during the 1939 World's Fair. My idea is for an extension using Jamaica Yard's yard tracks, and then along Union Turnpike where the Q46 bus that runs along it carries 14,000 riders every weekday, the ninth busiest bus route in the city. Since the M train will be sent down Queenslink, the R train or the N train if we swap the N and R will be the one running down this extension. I would extend the line to at least Utopia Parkway serving St. John's University, but if I were to be more ambitious, it could go further to Lake Success Shopping Center just outside of the city limits. Another yard that can be used for an extension in Queens would be a Corona Yard. We could use the yard tracks to create a branch of the cemetery to serve Eastern Queens. The line will run through Corona Yard before running next to the L.A. De Bar. Then it will run along Sanford Avenue, Casino Boulevard, and the Long Island Expressway to Cross Island Parkway in Alley Park. Next, we will look at yard extensions in the Bronx. We all know that MTA is currently building the Penn Access which will bring four new Metro North stations into the Bronx. However, not all of them have a subway connection. One of them is the Morris Park Station. However, the station is not far away from the Westchester Yard of the 6th train, so we could create a branch of the 6th train that runs through Westchester Yard and then along East Chester Road to Morris Park Avenue, where the Morris Park Metro North Station will be located. Last but not least, let's look at possible yard track extensions in Manhattan. The C train ends at 168th Street in Manhattan, but the C train was not intended to end here. Just north of 168th Street Station is the 174th Street Yard, where provisions were built to connect the C train to the lower deck of the George Washington Bridge to New Jersey, which was built to carry trains. However, that lower deck has been turned into car lanes, so we will either need a new tunnel, which will be more expensive, or if you ask me, take back those car lanes from the lower deck and lay tracks there. Yes, drivers will be mad about fewer lanes, but if we were serious about transit, 
we should do it. The new extension will give people an, an alternative to driving across the bridge, so it will reduce traffic on the New Jersey side. I will end the line at Fort Lee with potential future extensions further into New Jersey. The final yard track extension I have is an extension of the A train to 207th Street and 10th Avenue using the access track to the 207th Street yard. This isn't a priority but it will create another transfer between one and A trains and the entire extension will use existing yard tracks so the cost won't be high and that gives you a list of possible subway extensions in New York City using existing yard tracks or in some cases with some new ones to be clear most of the extensions mentioned in this video are not a priority compared to projects like the IBX, 2nd Avenue, Queenslink and etc. But it's cool to look at extensions we could pull off with minimal investment. And speaking of that investment, it could be funded by using land value capture mechanisms and or capping the yard for development. I also want to mention existing or potential transit projects using yard tracks, such as the Broad Street Line extension to Fern Rock Transit Center in Philadelphia, an extension of the DC Metro Green Line from Green Belt to Beltsville, an LA Metro B and D Line extension to Arts District 6th Street, an extension of the Beijing subway Yizhuang line to Taihu. What are your thoughts on using yard tracks to expand the New York City subway? Is there any that I may have missed? Share with me in the comments below. If you want to learn about the extensions in New York City I see as top priority, you can check out this video in which I talked about them in detail. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that video.